Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Attack of the Clones video. A series in which I take a look at clones that are supposedly one-to-one -one replicas of the real deal, but with mixed results. This series also caters towards phones that only run Android, the phone archive is more for archive videos, and the more obscure and strange clones. It's just to distinguish the two series from one another and not to mix things up. Before we jump into part two of this little special, you all know the usual stuff with my in-depth videos now. There will be timestamps left in the description as well as the pinned comment, so you can skip to wherever you need to be if you want to just see the specs or the teardown. That will be all down there for you to use if you want to. Also, application to check your phone for any fake specifications will be in the description as well as the firmware ripped from this device that we're going to be taking a look at today. One more thing, the quick disclaimer, just to make things clear, I don't endorse the purchasing of replica knockoff products, just showcasing these off for entertainment purposes. And well, I'll be going into a bit of a backstory for the clone we are looking at today anyways. All right, so if you haven't seen the previous iPhone 7 clone, I'll guard it up here. So feel free to check that one out first as most of the stuff you will see on this clone has pretty much been shown in that video. However, since buying this phone back in, I think 2018 or something, I've actually never checked out anything past just going into settings and having a look at the installed applications. So whatever I find on this phone is going to be an absolute first for me as well. Anyways, I try to keep the intro short, but it never seems to happen. But here we go. The iPhone 7 released in September 2016, discontinued in September 2019 and originally cost $1,299 for a 128 gig model here in Australia. Also, I'm displaying the specs on screen. I'll make sure that they're actually right this time. And I'll include that this has dual stereo speakers and it was the first iPhone that was actually waterproof, which are things I forgot to mention in the spec sheet in the previous video, so I'll make sure that's all fixed up. And here is the clone. And now to the untrained eye, they look about the same. And if we flip to the back, pretty much exactly the same. The camera is probably the only thing that sets any red flags off at the moment. Maybe the Apple logo sort of being pushed into the aluminium, unlike the real deal, which is just nice and flush with the back casing. But how did I acquire? this clone here. Well, as you all know, I like to go to cash converters and stuff like that. And uh, they had bought this and thought it was the real thing back in 2000. It could have been 2018 or 2019. I'm not too sure. But whoever bought this had a look at this and believed it was the real deal. So supposedly that's how good this clone is or how hard it was for the employee to tell that this was a knockoff. But I have the original sticker right here. They had priced it at $6.99, which I'm pretty sure is about 2018 pricing. I'm not too sure. And I was able to purchase this phone from them for $60, which is probably a little bit too much, but it is what it is. But at least this version is all aluminium, unlike the previous version, which is all plastic. So that's why I called this one the slightly higher quality one. Side by side, they are actually fairly close. Obviously, you can tell apart the LCDs from the real deal to the clone, but the earpiece and camera at the top, the camera on the clone looks a little bit sort of, you know, over that way sort of thing. Earpiece, sensor, and the home button there, which has a little ring around it, whereas this is just all black, which I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to be on the real deal anyways. Now around the size of the devices, the clone is actually ever so slightly thicker than the real deal, ever so slightly. But we've got a mute switch, power buttons, antenna bands at the top, nothing at the side, SIM tray, power button. You might be able to tell the difference just there in thickness, but we've got pentalobe screws, big grills, and lightning ports. And while it's hard to see at the moment, if you look right in just this area here, you can see a little gold contact, which pretty much gives this whole thing away. Right there, you can see it reflecting. There you go. And there's no mesh on the bottom like there is on the real deal. And then the back is pretty close. So focusing on the actual cameras, you can tell the difference right there. The True Tone LED flash seems to be a little bit lower in the casing. I'll check to see if that's a button as well. Pretty sure it is. But yeah, the Apple logos, as you can see, that's just pushed in and that's nice and flush. And the iPhone text looks a little something like that on the real deal and that on the clone. It doesn't look too bad. The iPhone text is a little bit thicker, but it's fairly good for what it is, unlike the other one that was just scratching off. I also forgot to mention weight on the previous one. The previous one was really, really light, whereas these two almost feel exactly the same in terms of weight. In the third video, which is going to be the iPhone 7 Plus, I plan to have them just all on the desk and we'll go through and pick out which one's going to be the best one, which one had the best quality and all that sort of thing. As for those two, that's what the real deal against the Goo phone's looking like. So I'll get the real deal out of the way. And we'll focus on this. Let's see if this is a button. Oh, wait, what? It's not a button? Oh, yes, it is. That's a button. We'll test that. Apart from dumping the system files, which meant that I had to go into settings and all that sort of thing, I don't know the specs of this. I don't know if this is going to be the same as the previous one. Who knows? There's only one way to find out. Telstra SIM. In we go. All right, time to power up the Goo Phone i7 slightly higher quality version. Here we go. It doesn't vibrate when you power it on, but, um, White Apple logo there. Once again, all the uh, system files from this will be dumped in the description. Feel free to go through them and tell me what you find. But I have factory reset this 
and it doesn't come up with any setup. It just boots into, wait for it, sometime today, maybe next week. There we go. Ta-da! It reckons that it's Wednesday the 2nd of January. No SIM card detected. That might be a problem. Anyways, if we just press over here, that's how it unlocks. I'll take the SIM card out and put it back in and see if that fixes anything. So taking a look at the display, it's not half bad. Once again, the display on this is pretty much looking like the one on the previous one. The colors aren't bad. It's pretty crisp. I'd say it's a 960 by 540 display, but we will check during the specifications. Also, one thing I forgot to show on the previous one as well is 3D touch. So there you go. But if you just put a little bit of pressure on there, it's the same thing. I wouldn't expect there to be a pressure sensor in the screen for 3D Touch to work, but at least they implemented that, and that was on the other one as well. Let's try this SIM card. Come on, SIM card, you can work, mate. Today, I've put another SIM card in and it's not detecting it, so I'll use the kill switch. There you go, see? Now, try it again. Oh, no service, no SIM. I think the SIM card slot's damaged. Oh, wait, what? I think there's blue tech in there. That's a first. But anyways, when we get to the teardown, I'll have a look and see if I can possibly fix it. The general snappiness of the system is much better than the previous one. It's actually somewhat responsive, nice and fast. There's all of the drop down notifications just there. Calendar, reminders, stocks and all that sort of stuff. It just, I don't know. It bounces around like this. It's a bit weird. Uh, no SIM card detected, which obviously can't do much about that. Uh, swapping up, I've got all the usual stuff there. The torch looks a little something like that, which I think there's two in there. This one's not too bad. It's fairly bright. I'll have to take a look and see if there's two LEDs or if it's only just one. On the previous one, there was only one LED. The other one was a sticker. Do you want to hear the Taptic engine on this? Haptic engine. Calculator looks like a calculator. Nothing too spectacular. We go this way. Can we actually search this time around? Oh, hello. There's the Apple keyboard there. So once again, with the home button, if you sort of touch the top, it works. Up the top here works and sort of just about there works. So I'd say it's using the same stuff as the previous one. I'll see if I can pull the display off this one and we'll take a better look. But otherwise the default apps are the usual, mail, calendar, photos, camera, maps, clock, weather, wallet, notes, reminders, stocks, videos, iBooks, iTunes store, app store, family, health, settings, FaceTime, calculator, podcast, watch, extras, has compass tips, voice memos, contacts, file manager, voice search, Google settings, and Play Store. The Goofone manufacturer decided to put the Play Store into the extras folder just to hide it. So you'd never know. Find iPhone and find friends. That should be quite helpful. I need this. Just the general sort of usability and sort of, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit laggy, of course, but it's much better than the previous one and jumping straight into settings. I don't know. It just, it feels more responsive than the previous one. Let's go through settings. So sign into your iPhone. There you go. I'll connect this to Wi-Fi and we'll come back to this. I am now connected to Wi-Fi. Let's go back to sign into your iPhone. Don't have an Apple ID or forgot it. Okay, about Apple ID and profit. Okay, but you can type in your ID and your password there if you want to. As I said on the previous one, good luck. If you want to do this, feel free. Airplay mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile data. Obviously, that's not going to do anything because it can't detect the SIM card. Enable 4G. Yep. Personal hotspots on this one. Was it on the previous one? I don't remember. But that's looking a little bit Android there. Carrier is not going to do anything because it can't detect the SIM card. Yeah, so I can't open that up anyways. Uh, notifications. Swap down from the top of the screen to view notifier. I don't recall this bouncy effect with the UI being on an actual iPhone. Okay, I have my 10s Max here. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> a little bit exaggerated on that one. Yeah, definitely. Control center, not much in here. Once again, feel free to pause in these menus to see if you find any spelling mistakes or anything like that, because there's probably some things that I'm gonna miss. Do not disturb, uh, we'll just leave that. Oh, the mute switch, does that work? Yep, of course it does. And the buttons? Oh, it doesn't make Android noises. Good stuff. General. Here we go. So let's go to software update first, I suppose. It would be really funny if this came up with software update. No, iOS 10.3.2, your software is up to date and it just crashed. Okay, so it's an iPhone, supposedly. We've got one song, seven videos, 34 photos, 14 applications. The capacity is 115.2 gigabytes with 48.79 gigabytes free. 
Yeah, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense there. The version is 10.3.2, which actually looks a little bit more legit there than on the previous one. Carrier doesn't say anything. We've got the model, serial number, all that sort of stuff there. Feel free to check all these up and see where these are pinched from. Couldn't believe that the other one was part iPhone 6S and some iPhone 7 that was blacklisted or something like that. People did tell me in the comments and it was kind of funny. Does legal work on here? Yep, it does. Holy crap. I mean, it's probably just some JPEGs they've got in the files, so that's not too surprising. Spotlight search. Alrighty. And hand often suggested apps. Nope, that doesn't work. Uh, accessibility. See? 3D touch. Supposedly it works, but as you seen when I demonstrated earlier, it doesn't work. At least you can change the settings. But yeah, assistive touch, 3D touch, develop options is in here, which once again, I just completely didn't know that it was in accessibility, which accessibility has accessibility in accessibility. And then accessibility is actually Android accessibility. Just go along with it. Oh, We've got apps. We can show the applications that are installed on this. Oh, here we go. You can also see the internal storage. 1.5 gig used, 0.98 gig free. At least it has more storage than the previous one. So I'll just scroll through here. Bixu D. Okay, or Bixu D or something, however that's pronounced. A whole bunch of MediaTek, cheeky Android. There he is. Danish for Go keyboard. No problems. ELE reader. Simlock, file manager, friend list. G sensor calibrate. A lot of Android stuff. Oh, iPhone, I'm yeah. Also iPhone Siri. That's cool. Uh, everything else, we'll just keep scrolling down to see if there's any other things that look legit. Reboot and write system. I wonder if anything in the secret codes will work. There's your settings there. So Android 4. Point something. Software update. We've got two of them just to make sure. Jelly Bean. Well, there you go. It's running Jelly Bean. Touch Pal, TTS, text to speech, maybe. I don't know. V Launcher. Voice unlock, voice command, watch, wireless update, wireless update, world clock, and wide GPS. If there was anything dodgy in there, feel free to let me know. Storage and iCloud usage shows that we have 66.41 gig used with 48.79 available. And if we manage storage, that doesn't do anything as well. And iCloud says that we have 5 gigabytes free. That's five gigabytes of complete bullshit. Background app refresh doesn't work. Restrictions, oh, that works. Okay. Date and time, keyboard, what can we choose in keyboard? Oh god, there's a lot of them. iPhone keyboard, that's looking legit. We'll just leave that then. iTunes Wi-Fi sync. Oh, that doesn't work. It displayed a message for like 0.2 seconds and uh, that's, yeah, no idea what that said. VPN, you need to use a lock screen, pin or password before you can use credential storage. We'll leave that for now. We'll come back to Touch ID soon. Display and brightness, auto brightness, view, text size, bold text, something just popped up then. Don't know what that was. Wallpaper is probably going to be all the stuff. Pitch from the actual iPhone 7 itself. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. No, these are Android 4 ones. Okay, so you can choose Android ones or you can choose something about unfortunately something has stopped working. Also, live wallpapers, I'll do this properly this time. So you touch and hold on the main screen. So if I do this, usually you can do that there, but no, that doesn't work. All right, I'll just set this. Okay, it just locked. Oh, look. Oh, oh. Two frames a second, watch it go. I think it just crashed. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. Wow. That's definitely got to be a GIF right there. At least it works. Changing it back to the original wallpaper. Notice the date looks a little bit uh, iffy there. Come on, buddy, you can do it. It's just a wallpaper. There you go. And it crashed. Dude, the whole thing's just crashed. Also, the text in settings, once again, is uh, ever so slightly off. Just ever so slightly, it's really off. Uh, sounds and haptics, though. Okay, so remember previously how I was saying that the performance on this actually isn't too bad. It's just gone into complete lag now. I mean, it's not too bad in here, but it's just starting to stutter a little bit. We'll go to the ringtones. Okay, marimba, there it is. Oh, Jesus. Okay, play that again. Uh, what does the old phone sound like? Oh. Okay. Ah! That speaker's a little loud, but it doesn't sound the best, I can tell you that. Oh boy, Siri's up next. Let's put Siri on. All right. 
What can I help you with? <laughs> open go open Google. Open Google. It's trying. It's trying. <laughs> it's trying. It's doing its best. Oh, boy. By this time, you could have just opened Google yourself, you know. Well, you know, previously voice search came up instead of this. Let me just go out of it and try Siri again. Listen to the voice, though. What can I help you with? Open Google. Wait. We may have something. We may have something. I don't think that's going to do anything. They made this Siri application that does that. doesn't actually do anything. What's the question mark do? Does that, is that implemented? Oh, okay. I'll open camera then. What can I help you with? Open camera. All right, safe to say that works, uh, works well. Touch ID and password, here we go. So we'll do touch ID for iPhone unlock. Oh, okay. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that didn't work. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. All right, add a fingerprint. Here we go. Place your finger, lift and rest your finger on the home button repeatedly. All right. Now we'll do everything in our power to not actually press the home button. So there you go. That's supposedly done. All right. So now if we do this. It should say touch ID. No, it, it doesn't. No, okay. Oh, touch ID, here we go. Wait, touch ID. Okay, press home to unlock. Touch ID. Touch ID. Touch ID. So, that's incredibly janky once again. You just press wherever you want around the home button and it opens up if it wants to. It just wants to enter passcode all the time. Battery is looking like this, which shows all your Android stuff. It's been powered on for 26 minutes and seven seconds, and that's about it. Privacy, find my iPhone. Oh, it's a mobile tracker. Oh, okay. That's definitely 100% legit. I mean, I know there was anti-theft stuff on Android 4, so it's probably using that sort of stuff. But then again, it probably doesn't even work. iTunes and App Store brings up this, which develop options is also here as well. You could put your iCloud here if you wanted to, and then log in. As I said, good luck. If you wanted to put your own iCloud details in, feel free. Wallet and Apple Pay? Oh, the iPhone 7 has NFC as well. Didn't even put that. Uh, and of course, that's not going to do anything. Mail contacts and calendars is going to be just where you can put your Gmail, I suppose. This thing keeps crashing. <laughs> it just opens up something. Yep, the windows popped up again. Okay, this is uh, this is looking good. Notes, we'll leave that. Reminders, we'll leave that too. Phone, we'll just leave that as well. Messages, iMessage, closed. FaceTime, go on. What does this look like? Refreshing. Is the registered? All right, cool. Well, is the registered? That's the question. Is the registered? Well, refreshing then. Okay, well, FaceTime is not the registered unfortunately. Maps is looking like that. Compass, use True North once again. Safari, looking like that. Doesn't offer much there. Music, sound check, EQ, all that stuff. Videos, can't do much there either. In photos and camera, not a lot you can do in here. iBooks, podcasts, game center. And that's it. There it is there. Unfortunately, browser has stopped working. So far, the performance of this went from not too bad to pretty much unusable. It's just crashing all the time. We've got multiple issues with the OS. I can definitely say that something is uh, wrong with our iPhone here. It's hard to pick out what it is, though. But anyways, we'll open up mail. Here is where you can put your Gmail in, I assume. Yep. And also, in settings, there wasn't many spelling mistakes or anything like that. It was laid out fairly well, I must say. And I will agree that it did look slightly better than the previous clone. But obviously, the skin and all the stuff they've put on here is just too much for the specifications of this to handle whatever the specs are going to be. And it just can't handle anything. You open two applications up and it goes, nope, can't do anything, sorry. Calendar looks like the calendar set in 2020. That's not correct. We want to forget 2020. Photos has albums. And if we go to shared, we have iCloud photo sharing memories 
and photos. Can we start sharing on iCloud? No, we cannot. Photos, camera. Let's jump into the camera. Alrighty. So this does have autofocus. <laughs> I can see why they sold this at cash converters. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. Let's do this again then. All right, it has autofocus. There you go, it autofocused. It will probably crash in about three, two, one. Oh, it didn't crash, okay, great. Uh, Slow-mo doesn't work, nothing barely works. Uh, yeah, video, slow-mo, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it crashed, yep, square, and it crashed. Close everything, close it all, there we go. Is it gonna work now? Come on, come on buddy, open up the camera. How was I able to take photos with this and I can't, I can't even open, like, I can't do it. I, I, I can't even open up the camera. Yep. All right, well, something is definitely wrong with this, but look, in camera, I can say that it does have autofocus, but HDR doesn't work. Most of the settings don't work, as you would have expected. I'll just splice in the photos and videos that I took with this device, and uh, we'll talk about the camera quality. Because what you're about to see in here just will not make any sense. And let me just try open camera again, just to double check. Nah, it's broken. Never mind. Enjoy what you're about to see. That's Ripley. Hi. How are you doing? Don't rip the door, please. What are you trying to do? Reach up there, silly. There's your belly. Anyways, this is the rear camera quality of the Goo Phone i7 slightly higher, better quality. That made complete sense. Oh, there's a bee following me around. Get away from me. There's no autofocus while recording video. It's kind of just fixed. I mean, it tries to do something, but it's not really effective at all. I think it'd be the same resolution as the previous one, 480 by 320, but I could be wrong. But yeah, can't do anything about that. And I can hear crickets. They're the bane of my existence, I swear. The three Muppets, as per usual, nothing changed with them, actually. There we go, that's a bit better. There is EIS going on here because it is slightly stabilised. If you can kind of see that there, it's not too bad. I say it's not too bad and it's only like 320p, but anyways, moving down to Stuart. No, oh, brick wall, yeah. Uh, Stuart is there, looking pretty nice as usual. The lemon tree with absolutely no lemons on it. I've looked, there's none. Maybe next year or something, I don't know. And the faraway aircon looks a little something like uh, it'll it'll zoom in. Hang on, I get there. There we go. That's what the faraway icon looks like at four times digital zoom, and that's about it. And the sky as well. It's looking a little something like that. It's very very nice. Look at that. And uh, yep, that's pretty much it with this one. So let's move on to the front view quality and continue on. Slow mo my ass. Can you hear the crickets? It's going off their heads, man. But this is the slightly higher quality Goo Phone i7, and we don't have autofocus on the video. Why does it also look like it's doing more than 30 FPS? It's really, really, really smooth. 
but anyways, that's Nightmare with the Holiday Flash. Nothing special, but it'll do. I can swear I can hear other things out here with me. Testing the front camera quality of the slightly higher quality Goofone i7. This is what it looks like, and we've got jelly movement, unfortunately. The other one had no jelly movement. Barely any. Can I hear crickets? They're the vein of my existence at the moment. Uh, do we have autofocus? It reckons we do. Is it doing anything, though? Probably not, because this is going to be probably 320p or something like that. Uh, but that's what that looks like. It'll do. How is the front camera 8 megapixels that looks like this? Then the rear camera is 2 megapixels but looks like this. And both cameras record video in 176 by 144. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. How does any of that make sense whatsoever? 176 by 144 is the video resolution. 8 megapixel front. Go away, browser. 8 megapixel front camera, supposedly. 2 megapixel rear camera, supposedly. That looks better than the front camera. Oh, go away, browser. <laughs> I can't explain what I'm trying to explain. The 2 megapixel back camera looks better than the front one. I just agree with it. At least it has autofocus. Kind of. It barely worked. But at least it has autofocus. That's one thing. I really just want to get through this as fast as possible because I have a feeling this is just going to spontaneously combust. This thing is just... The other phone that I looked at, the other Goo phone, that was usable. This one, in the first 10 minutes, it was usable. Now it's it's just gone to a it's it's a slug now it's just chugging along you know let's open up maps and see if it crashes if it crashes again i'll kill switch it actually that might help i'll reset it take that let's try it again another reboot should fix all our didn't i disable this all right we'll try camera again just so i can show you all oh there you go okay now you can see it see uh live doesn't work, I know that, and uh, all of these other features don't work. So that's good. At least camera opens now. Maps. Let's see if maps works this time. Please open the source to determine your location. Cancel. Doesn't look like Google Maps. I'm somewhere over... There I am. Right there. Somewhere there. Somewhere there. Right about there. Who knows? Somewhere there. Clock looks like... I think we've already opened clock, haven't we? Like that. Weather? Unknown. Wallet. Ooh, scan code. Find apps for wallet. Okay, none of that works. Uh, passes. Oh, no, this is just this is just an image, isn't it? Yeah, this is just an image. Someone's going to have to go through the system files and tell me if that's actually a JPEG or not. I'm fairly sure it is. It's just a picture that they've went, yep, there you go. The APK is probably like three kilobytes. Uh, reminders, yep, all looking usual here. Stonks. Is that still funny to say? Probably not. It's looking, once again, very good. Videos. Oh. Here we go. Well, it doesn't look too bad, but 176 by 144. iBooks. iBooks? Wait. Oh, oh, there's the ELE reader, or LE reader. Is this... Oh, okay. This is sophisticated. It's an ebook reader. You can log into this thing. Sign in for Google. Okay, so this is probably a legit ebook reader that they've just put on here and went... Yep, iBooks. iTunes Store. Get iTunes U app. Um... We love iOS 10 for apps. Okay, PUBG Mobile Lite. Let's see what happens. It Download failed, please try again later. I thought that was actually gonna work there for a second. Can we try anything else? What's, what, what is here? Categories, oh, hello. Install, YouTube. Yeah, oh, download failed, please try again later. I'm hopefully still connected to Wi-Fi. Okay, search and manage. Failed and failed, check new version. You are currently using the newest version. Good, am I still connected to Wi-Fi then? Yeah, I'm still connected to Wi-Fi. So why are you no worky? So then if I actually open App Store, yeah, that's the same thing. This could actually be opening up the Play Store, but the reason why it's not downloading is because there's no, you know, account logged into it. So if I type in Crazy Taxi, for example, no content. So maybe this is just a snapshot, perhaps? Or is this actual stuff from the Play Store that's just been... Let's try Download Most. Download Most. Okay, Popular Most. Yeah, I have a feeling that's just a couple of applications that are on here or bits of the Play Store that's just thrown onto here. Load it all. Load it all. No problemo. Alright, well, family. Wasn't it called... Oh yeah, it was called home on the previous one. Hello. Add accessory. Searching for accessories. My accessory isn't shown here. <laughs> I'm not gonna say a joke about the PP phone. I'm not gonna say anything. What is with this? Browser has stopped working. I know. Browser doesn't work. Just set up my health. Pretend like nothing ever matters. Okay, we'll just get started. Okay, get started. There we go.
Welcome to health. Oh, it's not eye health, it's welcome to health. Well, um, that's as far as we're gonna get with health, unfortunately. Okay, well, let's see if the browser actually works then. So, here it goes. Yeah, it works. All right, let's jump onto Google. There we go. Things are working. I fu- I was trying to type there. Oh, okay. No, that's- No, bring up the keyboard. I- You know what? I- I'll just go up here then. Nope, you can type in one character and that's it. <laughs> okay, so in order to get to YouTube then, so we type in O. Oh, we can, we can actually type in more. Here we go. All right, it's good now. It's good. What is it? What search engine is it even using? Okay, we have to go to Google then. Gorthill.com. Yeah, all right. Sounds just about right for this. Okay, well, we're back to Google. So let's try to type in one character at a time. Is podcasts on here? If podcast is on here, podcast is YouTube. Fuck, it's not. Nope, it just took us back there. Okay, I'll try and persist. Oh wait, YouTube is downloading. Nope, download failed. Okay, we're gonna have to go through the browser then. Oh wait, YouTube's here. I didn't see that before. Okay, we're on to YouTube. Never mind, it's fine. We're good. All right, so I have found the issue. What was happening was the default Gboard, which has a slight iOS skin on it, kept crashing anytime I wanted to actually type something. So I've changed it to the iPhone keyboard and that's what it looks like. So now I can type in, yeah, I can actually type in stuff. Oh wait, this is not where I want it to be. No, I broke it. <laughs> okay. That's fair. I killed it. <laughs> I actually killed it. I- I killed it. Really? I just was tapping the screen, uh, you know, uh, quite aggressively. And I've killed it. <laughs> I hold the kill switch for a bit just to see, but, uh, I killed it. This phone is painful. The other one, at least it wasn't this bad, but this... Oh, God. Oh, God, it's still alive. We have to continue on. I thought that was it. I thought I could just end it and go, you know what? We'll just go straight to the teardown. Stuff the rest of it. But no, it lives on. More torture. Okay. So that means I have to go back to YouTube. Oh, can we just skip that? It's not going to work. It can barely run anything. I'm yet to try gaming on this. I don't even dare to imagine what GTA 3 is going to look like on this. But okay, let's try it again. No problems. Go straight to the browser. Make sure because it's all fast at the moment. Here we go. So we'll uh, cancel. Wait. No, 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 no. Cancel. Go to YouTube. Come on, you can do it, buddy. Come on, we can type in more than two characters. We can do it. We got this. We got this. I believe in you. I was able to type in CO, and then it crashed. So let me just try it again and see if my keyboard issue has been fixed. Okay, let me just wait. Okay. All right. Here. Oh, my God. It's actually working. Well, I think so. Yes, there it is there. There it is. Holy moly. We are so close. We are ever so close. Oh, there it is there. Okay. Only took me about half an hour, but we got there in the end. Amazing. Oh, okay, that's incre <laughs> that's incredibly broken just there. No worries whatsoever. Oh, wait, there you go. Okay, we'll let the ad play then. Can't skip it. I give up. I give up, man. <laughs> I give up on this thing. It doesn't want to even do anything. All right, let's just try BFG Division and quickly get this thing done. I want to tear this thing apart. Unusable hunk of somewhat good, decent build quality, but it's a piece of crap, man. This is infuriating. BFG Division all the way up. Maximum. Here we go. Go to about there. That's just flat, horrible. The low quality goo phone's better than this. So I can't do the browser test then. I can't do it. The fact that it can't even play video. Well, it was playing the ad at like two frames a second and it couldn't even do that. Costa Rica in 4K is not even gonna, it couldn't even load. All right, no worries, uh, FaceTime. We'll just continue on. Oh, this is FaceTime. All right, no worries. Oh, is this just another JPEG? 
Oh, no, you can actually do something. Call Tom. Remember Tom on MySpace? He was always your friend. And then, you know, you don't have FaceTime account. Please click OK to register. OK. Oh, that's right. Is the registered. Just agree. Once again, calculator. Yes. OK. Podcasts. No problems. Apple Watch. Can we pair one? Good afternoon. Is it the same application? It's exactly the same thing. Is it going to open? Oh, it opened the camera. It opened the camera. It opened the camera. That's amazing. Explore. Introducing the Apple Watch. Oh, can we actually play a video? We might be able to test something. Oh, no, because that's another JPEG again. This is, uh, it's a picture. It's a picture. <laughs> Oh, they've actually got someone's Apple ID there. <laughs> oh, shit. They couldn't have done this any better, could they? Oh, look at the search text as well. Oh, wow. Extras, compass. It's probably going to go wee all over the place. Oh, hello. I predicted it. I predicted it. <laughs> find north. You can do it, buddy. You can find north. I believe in you. I have faith in you. You can do it. You're not going to find north. If you're ever stuck in the middle of nowhere and you've got this, you're not getting home. I guarantee that you are not getting home. Oh, yep. Once again, the pictures in an app. Please, someone go through the files and extract these and tell me if these are actually just pictures. I'm pretty sure they are. It's an APK packed together with pictures in it. That's it. And an icon. Uh, the microphone quality, as you heard in the... Shut up, browser. As you heard in the um, camera test is something like... Fuck this. I almost dropped the phone. Enter a name for this voice memo. Okay. Something like fuck this. Works. Contacts. Shows no contacts. Because no SIM. File manager. While in here, I'll install the applications that I want to test. And uh, we'll continue on. Give me a second. Or maybe half an hour. This may take a while. Okay, well that was done. That wasn't that painful. Voice search. Speak. Hello. <laughs> of course that wasn't going to work. The sound was excellent though. Google settings. It's just Google settings. Okay. And uh, Play Store. Is this actually going to be the App Store? But oh, no, that's where you add your account. Okay, that makes sense. Lastly, we have Find iPhone. Is this just a picture? Is it a picture? It's a picture. <laughs> It's a picture. And find friends is going to be a picture. Well, I can't find friends. That's unfortunate. We are almost at the end. We've just got to test gaming, which probably is not going to work, and check the specs out, and I want to tear this thing apart. This was an absolutely difficult experience. Can I put it lightly? It was very difficult. Just go. GTA 3, just go. Do it. That actually can run the first bit of it. All right. Okay. Turn the volume down a little bit. I'm going to bump everything up to max. Why not? Put it this way. If the previous one ran GTA 3 at a somewhat half reasonable frame rate and this can't... I, no words. No words. Go on. Good. Good. Can I just... Can I throw this out the window now, please? Okay, I'll try that again. All right, I'll put everything on default. Is it going to work this time, or is it going to crash? Yep, it crashed again. Let's check the specs. Get this over and done with, please. <laughs> please, put me out of my misery. Supposedly, it has a 720p display. What the fuck? No, it doesn't. Multi-touch. Two-point multi-touch. That's good. Apple iPhone, MT6582. Okay, that's better than an MT6580. But 720p display, 4.2.2, 512 megabytes of RAM, which is DDR2, not DDR1, like on the previous one. Four gigabytes of internal storage. MT65, oh, it's an MT6589, F-A-K-E. I see what they're doing there. All okay. right. So it is probably a 6580 then. I was looking for it, and there it is there. The serial number, 01234567898 ABCDEF, which was on the previous one. I didn't show it. Screen, 720p. That's not true. That can't be correct. The camera, front is 8 megapixels, and the back is 5 megapixels, supposedly. CPU, 43 degrees. That's about right. Proximity, light, and accelerometer. I have a feeling the only thing it's got is an accelerometer. Yes, it does. Okay, you can go back now. Or are you... Oh, okay. So let's try the other application just to see what have we got on here. Of course. Of, absolutely. Is anyone keeping count on how many times this has crashed? 
this is painful. Go on, open it. You can do it. Show us. Oh, yes. Good. Don't crash. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. You can't do it, can you, buddy? You just, you're struggling. Oh, you, oh, no. No, 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 no. We're, we're happy to wait. We're good. We're good. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. MT6582 reckons 4.2.2, 6582, quad core 1.3 gigahertz, basically an MT6580, 4 gig, and I'm using this too fast. It will probably crash now. Oop. No. We're good. 512 meg of RAM. Screen size says 4.8 inches. Oh, it's close to about 4.7, but if we just put it like so, where there's going to be the extra bit of the LCD there for the Touch ID, it probably actually is 4.8 inches. But it's actually 720p, the display. I don't believe that. I reckon 960 by 540, but if it's actually a 720p display, okay. Fair enough. I know there is a way to check the resolution in developer options, but honestly, at this point in time, I just want to tear this thing down. Looks good, the screen's good, but everything else can just go straight down the tube. Five megapixel and then eight megapixel. All right, I'll open up the Secret Codes app and um, can I just pull this thing apart? Put put me out of my misery, please. Oh, there's 98 of them, are you serious, man? Oh, 007 is friend list. Do I want to see my friend list, 007. You can do it. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, we can't do it. Uh, oh, oh, hello. This machine number, null. No contact man, please add a contact man. <laughs> oh, that's the funniest thing that's come out of this phone so far. All right, cool. Wireless update, and all of these are just settings. Once again, someone's going to have to go through these and see if anything pops up. I'll just go with zero. Let's see zero. A basic secret code should pop up with something. Should. Let me try zero three. Oh. Okay, well that's something. 4636, that's um, oh, yep, I'll try this one, and that's, uh, that's actual settings. Hello, hi actual settings, good to see you. We can actually see the storage, 128 gigabytes. So yeah, each of those settings I'd have to open up one by one to sort of see what's going on here, but at least that's legit settings. Well, that's the specifications there. Fingerprint. True. Has chip. False. That makes sense. 2017 the build date was. Home key type is Duntai FT6X06. 720p though. Okay, I just pressed a whole bunch of them to see if anything would happen. No. I'm quite happy to call it here in regards to this. When you first power this on, you know, kind of looks and feels like an iPhone. Once you actually try and use any of the features, that's it. It's completely unusable. You can't open a game that will run on basically anything without that crashing. Browser, you can have that open, but even if you try to open YouTube, which you can, but try and watch a video, it crashes. Even just by staring at it, it crashes. The only redeeming factors I will say about this is that they tried with the whole iOS look, I'll give them that, the display being 720p, which I still have a hard time believing it's 720p, but let's just for the whole sake of it, believe it's 720p, it's not a bad display, but I put it on the same level as the other one, and the build of this isn't too bad, but otherwise everything else completely unusable. This was frustrating to have a look at. I thought this would be the better one from this one, but this one is miles ahead of this. How? I have no idea. Let's tear it down. That's my conclusion. Whoever did sell this to cash converters, well done, because you fooled them and you probably got a lot more money than what you originally paid for this. And I then spent $60 on this thing. <sighs> I've dropped it like that several times during the video, so that's probably the reason why it's dead anyways. And the SIM card didn't even work either. Nothing worked on this. Get out. So we're going to need that, 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 that. All right, let's tear this thing apart. You know, I, I woke up today and I went, it's going to be fun to review this clone. It's been sitting around for so long and oh, fun to finally get to play around with it. I hated every moment of it. Okie dokie. Give me. This is the same, except the micro SD card slot is actually above the SIM card tray. Okay, the battery has nothing on it. That's soldered directly into place, but it looks like the same motherboard. No, it's not. The touch and that are in the same place as the previous one. That's quite interesting. That's there for cosmetics, isn't it? Does the glob of solder. No problems. So we do have the aluminium back with the machined Apple logo there. We do have the mute switch, which did work, and that has two contacts there like so, but otherwise that's all looking. Why don't I just put this 
on that. Would that work? We then might have somewhat of a kind of okay feeling goo phone. We might do that in the third video. Also, look what I just found. <laughs> we have a metal weight. To make it feel the exact same as a real iPhone, metal weight. Grand. Battery is a, get out. Oh, hello. Oh, the battery is a 1,100 milliamp hour battery. It's worse than the previous one. How? Don't question it, s'mores. Do not question it. Don't question it. Don't question it. Do not even question it. There is no point of even questioning it. All right, so lifting off that. So this is probably the most exciting part of the video because now we get to see the innards, but there's the speaker just there with the gold contact that you could see beforehand. The bottom PCB looks like so. If I was to then pull this this up it just pops up like so and I'd say that is the capacitive area for the home button let's do a little bit of a test then so with the home button gone you can see how much of the area is actually where the LCD is so let's just power it on in its current um, state and I'll just see if that PCB that's just dangling there is the home button or if it's actually part of the screen assembly because I really want to make sure because you can see it there okay yeah it is it is part, it's part of the touch. I'll see if I can pull the screen off. All right, so we have the rear camera, which looks a little something like that. I'll Google this code and see if it pops up with anything. No OIS or anything, but supposedly that's two megapixels, but it did take some good shots. I will say that, depending on what the code corresponds with on Google, it could be a five megapixel camera like it did say in settings, but it's just forced down to two megapixels for some reason. Something along those lines, I don't know. The photos weren't half bad. We can also see the two LED flashes that they've implemented onto this and the kill switch is all part of that assembly as well. The vibration motor was also at the top, not at the bottom. Also, that glob of solder wasn't just there for the whole sake of it. No, it's actually for the GSM signal. That's why it's just dangling there. Also, there's a code, ZYSA32. Don't know if that means anything, but there you go. Uh, let's take the front camera out, and this supposedly is 8 megapixels. Alrighty. No, QHX. There you go. That's what that is. Eight megapixels, that reckons. Well, according to the resolution anyways. At this point in time, also, I don't care if I break this. I've dumped the system files off. That's all I really need to do. Everything else now is just a bonus. Yeah, chick come, buddy. Yeah, chick come. All righty. We're in. That's it there. That's our motherboard. I will show you that sticker that's on there. I can see 32 for 3G, which should match the specifications that we did see. That's that. And then flip. Oh, okay. We've just got exposed guts. It is an MT6582V CPU and a Samsung module, which is a KMN5W000ZM. I will Google this and tell you if that's the four gigabyte module. It should be. Or that could be the 512 meg RAM. That should be the 512 meg RAM, actually. Got another chip just there a couple of other ones going along there the sim card slot yeah there's there, there's been blue tech or something like that in there that's just not even gonna work got another mediatek one there another mediatek one just there it is the a8232 motherboard that is what this is also that's that's a problem right there with the battery that's all right we just use that to put that back down into place no worries looks factory so now the question is can i separate the glass and not kill anything i have successfully separated the frame which is all metal so there's the code on the lcd just there not sure if that's going to correspond with anything if we take a look here though this appears to be the area for the home button so all it is is this connector here is all of the touch all of that going around there and then this lcd is just plonked on there like so and that is pretty much how that works all right, so now we get a better look. Okay, so that is the LCD there and there's the touch. So the question is, what if we reassemble this and power this on and see what that is? Cause that's not a 4.7 inch display. That's slightly bigger. That's what she said. What? That's a five inch display. Let's put it back together. Okay. So currently, this is what it looks like. Yeah, there's no sensor up there either. Thought so. Let's do some experiments here. We'll put the LCD back in. While we're removing the glass and stuff, I heard some cracks and crunches and stuff. So if this doesn't work, don't be surprised. Oh, no, I did kill the display. No, so the LCD is not bigger as I thought it was. I thought it may have been slightly bigger, but no, it's just the components for the LCD are just there and the home button rests on top of that. And then the area for the home button is applied on here and it's right there. So if I was to just 
slot this back on. I was just intrigued to see how this worked. Oh, it's just go. That's fine. Go from the go phone. It's pretty disjointed when you can do stuff like that, when you can just have the touch screen over here somewhere and, you know, use your phone like you do. That's how that works. It's all just on the touch screen. Nothing to do with the LCD, as I thought. It was worth it to tear it down though. So now I'm gonna put it back together, which basically means just slap together in its current state. I'll just put the metal weight back in too, because it holds the battery in place. Let's see? Beautiful. Factory. Nope, I didn't fix the LCD, I can tell you that. That's all right, doesn't matter. Well, while it's booting up, I'm gonna show the complete specifications for this thing on screen here. So feel free to pause the video and have a read of all of that. I'm pretty sure that's all the specifications that I've come up with for this Goofone i7 slightly higher quality clone that's not really a slightly higher quality clone at all. It's actually just quite terrible. Uh, we got to see how the whole home button thingamajiggy works and all that sort of thing. So that's it and all the fingerprints that have been collected on here. Why am I even cleaning it? Is there even a reason to clean it now? <laughs> Probably not. This was just painful. Absolutely painful. The low quality one is better than the high quality one. True specification wise, this is better than the previous one, but in terms of usability, previous screw phone is much better. Anyways, we're done with it. We are finished. I lost one of the pentalobes. It kind of just flew out. Doesn't matter. Well, folks, that is going to do it for the second part of the kind of revival of the iPhone clone month. That's only going to be another video and then that's it. I don't really know what else to say about this clone. It was unusable. As I said, to put it nicely, unusable. I hope you did enjoy the second installment in this little series. I was honestly expecting a lot more from that phone, but it is what it is at the end of the day. But if you managed to watch the whole thing in one sitting, thank you very much for that. I always appreciate it. If you had to use the timestamps that were in the description or the pinned comment, that's all good. If you wanted to just see the teardown or if you just want to see how this thing would uh, perform in games well it's all there for you system files are also in the description as well as the applications that i used on the phone to test it that's all down there as well uh yeah if someone can please go through the system files and tell me if you can find anything that'd be great feel free to share your findings with me in the comments and i'll take a look at them i may have looked through the files myself after i finish filming just to see but yeah otherwise for the next video is the iphone 7 plus clone which i have done a review on i do remember the specifications but it's also fairly janky as well so stay tuned for that one but anyways i Everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And thank you once again for all the support. I can't stress that enough. Uh, you know, having 70k, it's just crazy. So I'm trying to do something special for you folks by doing the iPhones that I haven't touched in years. So I hope this is providing some sort of good entertainment for you all. My misery is your entertainment. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it. I'm going to leave it here. Thanks again for watching this video. I do appreciate it. And as always, take care. Stay safe. Be good people. I'll see you all in the next one, which will be the iPhone 7 Plus clone. And that'll be it for iPhones for now. Unless someone wants me to re-review the iPhone 6 and 6S that I have here, because I'd like to try them again. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see them revisited, and I'm happy to do that, if they still work. Anyways, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.